I'm turning 50 this month and I want to celebrate by donating $100,000 of non-lethal aid to Ukraine. My friend Johnny Rogers runs Help Is On The Way UA. A special message from him is at the end of this video or you can head on over and donate now. Let's get on to the video. Why don't we see flamethrowers being used by Ukraine or by Israel in Gaza? Flamethrowers were used to great effect during World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and then nations just kind of stopped using them. Except for one, China. And I'll get to why I think that's the case in a moment. Yeah, I never served in Afghanistan, but I'm sure some units would have loved to have flamethrowers there. I opened up Ground News this morning and saw that President Trump wants Bagram Airfield back from the Taliban because it could be used as a staging base against the Chinese. I read Ground News every single day. It gives me the ownership of the publication, the factuality rating, and the bias of the publication. There's also a blind spot report which compensates for your own personal biases. For example, did you know that a Republican lawmaker called for the National Guard to be deployed in Cleveland? Zero left-leaning outlets covered that story. Or if you lean right, did you know that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asked for more European air defense systems? Zero right-leaning outlets covered that story. The fact is that all of us are biased in one way or the other, and those biases are blind spots in how we consume information. Ground News can help. So click the link in the description below, hit the QR code, or go to ground.news slash Ryan for 40% off the Vantage plan, which is what I use. I actually pay for it. And start getting the whole side of the story. To start, let's talk about what a flamethrower is and how a flamethrower works. Think of a flamethrower like a really angry super soaker. You've got two tanks on your back, one with liquid fuel, it's usually gasoline mixed with something sticky so that it clings, and another compressed gas, usually nitrogen, to use as the propellant. When you squeeze the trigger on the flamethrower, all that compressed gas forces the fuel out of a hose and a nozzle. At the tip of the nozzle, there's some sort of igniter, sometimes just a little pilot flame that sets the fuel on fire as it leaves. So what you get is a stream of burning liquid that sticks to bunkers, trenches, men, anything unlucky enough to be in front of you. The range is usually 20 to 40 meters. It's not exactly artillery here, but it is way closer than you want to be from a guy throwing fire at you. Um, it's terrifying, but it's also heavy and dangerous to the operator. All right, that's too hot. Anything we can do about that heat? Rick, it's a flamethrower. Yeah. Although it won't explode like you see in the movies. The propellant tank is usually nitrogen and therefore non-flammable. The fuel tank would just kind of dribble out. It wouldn't explode. Now, flamethrowers have several effects and advantages. The first effect is fire. It's a flamethrower. You shoot this into a trench, a cave, a bunker. You have fuel splatter everywhere. It can also catch other things on fire or detonate ammunition. The second effect is suffocation. Even if you don't get hit by the fire, let's say you're in a bunker or something, the flames can consume all the oxygen and you kind of need that to breathe. The third is psychological. Nobody wants to burn to death. Now here are the disadvantages. First is that it's heavy. We're talking about something that's almost 70 pounds when fitted with fuel. The second is a uh, short range, maybe 40 meters at the most. So getting that close to a bunker under fire is gonna be really hard. So you're carrying this 70 pound piece of equipment close to a bunker, uh, especially when the people inside the bunker have a vested interest in not letting you get that close. The third is that you, you don't get that many shots with a flamethrower, maybe six or seven squeezes of that trigger until you're out of fuel. Fourth disadvantage is logistics. Extra flamethrower fuel and spare parts need to be carried along and they take up space inside supply trucks. But you know, the, the main issue really is the weight. On a modern flamethrower, you might be able to use titanium or carbon fibers for some components, but you can't cheat physics. The fuel is gonna weigh what it weighs. The biggest issue is do you really wanna carry this heavy weapon for something you won't need 95% of the time? These days, we have shoulder-fired bunker buster munitions, we have thermobaric rockets, we have grenade launchers which can pitch a grenade 
into a window, uh, and all of those items can be used for other things. Uh, I don't believe any flamethrowers remain in the U.S. Army inventory. Uh, if you take a look at this story by U.S. Army four-star General Stephen J. Townsend, he said, On the last day, I watched a reconnaissance video feed of the final Iraqi assault. I was actually proud to see him do it because it took a tremendous amount of courage. On the last day, there was an Iraqi bulldozer driver driving through that field of rubble, and on each side of the bulldozer was a squad of Iraqi infantry walking along, protecting the bulldozer. And as ISIS fighters popped up out of the rubble, the bulldozer would turn towards them and bury them in their hole. And the infantry would walk along and drop in grenades and shoot guys trying to fire a, a rocket at the bulldozer to knock it out. It looked, it reminded me of something you would watch on a World War II video of Iwo Jima with Marines or something burying Japanese diehard defenders on Iwo Jima. That's what it looked like to me. Never thought I would see that kind of a spectacle in modern war. But that's what was going on. I, we found ourselves wondering if we still had flamethrowers in our inventory. Turns out we don't. Some armies do, but we didn't. I couldn't get my hands on flamethrowers fast, or I would have. So again, that was kind of an edge case, right? So why aren't flamethrowers being used in Ukraine? Well, you could make a good case for their use in the first two years of war when Ukrainians were counterattacking Russian bunkers. But as drones kind of evolved, speed is the key. Crossing that no man's land to another bunker with a flamethrower on your back, it's going to be really hard to do, especially with first-person view drones flying around trying to hit you. Now, Ukraine does appear to have experimented with dragon drones that drop molten metal, but, you know, we really haven't heard about those dragon drones in a while. Um, I assume they either just weren't effective or their slow speed and predictable path made them vulnerable to jamming or counter-drone fire. So why isn't Israel using them? Well, my answer to that is, are you crazy? <laughs> You know, they might be useful in tunnels, but like these tunnel complexes are so massive and so booby trapped that getting a man with a flamethrower in there would just be very, very difficult and counterproductive. It's, it's honestly just easier to collapse those tunnels with explosives and just kind of move on to the next tunnel. Now, the one outlier here is China. They use the Type 74 flamethrower, and you know, I honestly really don't know why, but I do have a theory. The Chinese have the FPF uh, 97A, which is a thermobaric rocket. So they don't really need flamethrowers for like fighting Taiwan or hitting bunkers in Taiwan. So the only thing I can think of is that China doesn't need flamethrowers. But they kind of keep them around because flamethrowers look pretty cool. And if you have a population that doesn't know much about the military, showing footage of guys using flamethrowers might actually convince your population that it's a really impressive weapon. Hey, uh, if you want to support the channel, grab my Intel Life shirt from Bunker Branding. Uh, you can also grab The Last Republic which is a novel I made about Brigham Young founding his own country in 1849 and uh, what happens 170 years later when the U.S. doesn't like that anymore. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Believe it or not, on September 25th, this sexy pile of man candy is turning 50. And for my birthday, I don't want any presents. Instead, I want you to donate to help is on the way UA. My friend Johnny Rogers essentially drives around Ukraine in a van giving out non-lethal aid. Yes, I still have a security clearance. I can't donate any lethal aid, but Johnny Rogers has a special message for you. Thank you so much for everything you guys do to support me. You 
make this possible. You help me help these guys. Thank you so much, Ryan Macbeth, for the shout out. You make this possible. Every little donation counts. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow me. Go to helpisontheway.ua.com today. Do a donation and follow Ryan. He's a great guy. And Ukrainian Relief Fund on Instagram. Thank you so much. Slava Ukraini! My goal here is $100,000. You can donate at the link below. Every dollar helps.